Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome dear learners. This is a video for the subject of education, for the course of Bachelors in Education and for the paper of Educational Technology Part 2. This video lecture is based on the topic Emerging Technologies and Issues in Educational Technology. And we are going to discuss the models of instructional designing and the model for discussion in this lecture is EDI model. The video lecture is recorded by Dr. Iram Khan. The course coordinator and the presenter of this video is Dr. Iram Khan from Jamia Millia Islamia, New Delhi. The academic expert or reviewer for this video is Professor Jesse Abraham from Jamia Millia Islamia, New Delhi. This video is produced under the project DTS Swayam Prabha channels of Ministry of Education, Government of India. Hello my dear students, I am Dr. Iram Khan, Assistant Professor at Institute of Advanced Studies in Education, Faculty of Education, Jamia Millia Islamia, New Delhi. Today we will be discussing a topic related to emerging technologies and issues in educational technology and this lecture is based on the models of instructional designing and here we are going to discuss the model which is known as the ADD model. Let us start the discussion first with the objectives. The objectives for this session are to discuss the meaning and definitions of instructional designing, to elaborate the EDI model of instructional designing and to explain the steps of EDI model for instructional designing. So what is instructional designing? Instructional designing is the process by which instruction is improved through the analysis of learning needs and systematic development of learning experiences. Instructional designers often use technology and multimedia as tools to enhance instruction. An instructional design model provides guidelines to organize appropriate pedagogical scenarios to achieve the various stipulated instructional goals. Instructional design models describe how to conduct the various steps and these steps involve instructional design process. The models help the trainers and educators to guide and plan the overall process. And that is why we consider the in instructional designing models very important for designing a proper instructional process. Instructional design can be defined as the practice of creating instructional experiences to help in the facilitation of learning and this learning will happen very effectively if it is designed and uh, created in terms of the instructional design in a very proper way. According to Driscoll and Carlinier, uh, they say under quotes that design is more than a process. That process and resulting product represent a framework of thinking. Another uh, group of uh, educationists say that instructional design is intended to be an iterative process to plan outcomes, selecting effective strategies for teaching and learning, choosing relevant technologies, identifying educational media and measuring performance. And this is uh, quoted by Branch and Kupak. Let us now discuss about the very popular model of instructional designing and this is considered to be the EDI model. Although we are going to discuss the other models in some other lectures but EDI model is something which is the first and foremost which we wish to discuss here in this uh, se session which is very much related to the instructional designing. The concept of instructional designing can be tracked back to as early as the year 1950 or you can say that the decade of 1950s was uh, somehow very much related to the development of the instructional designing process. But until the year 1975, uh, when EDI model was designed, it was not that popular. EDI model 
basically bring in this popularity into the area of instructional designing. Originally, the EDI model was developed for the US Army by the Center for Educational Technology at Florida State University. And later, the, this model or uh, the EDI model was implemented across all the branches of the US Arms Forces. So you can see that it was initiated for the armed forces and it was uh, developed for the army. But later on, a lot of other areas were also uh, seen that, uh, that this uh, particular model was very much useful and it can be used for the designing of the instruction in different other areas too. So the EDI model is based on an earlier instructional designing model which has the five-step approach and which had been developed by the US Air Forces. But this Air model or the EDI model retained the five steps uh, or the features which are based on the five steps and included many sub stages with uh, like in one uh, stage or one uh, step you can find many sub stages and you can say that there are five broad phases and under these five broad phases there are many things which are covered and due to the uh, hierarchical structure of the steps uh, which constitute this ED model, we, uh, we have to complete the process uh, if it is uh, based on the ED approach in a very linear fashion. We can't complete one uh, phase ahead of the other. So first phase is to be completed, then only we can move to the second phase and likewise we have to go with the uh, linear structure or hierarchical structure of the steps of the EDI model. EDI is basically an acronym and the A, D, D, I, E basically are, are constituted with different terminologies. So EDI stands for analyze, design, develop, implement and evaluate. And these equate to a five phase process for developing the instructional materials. Here this analyze basically uh, stands for that the instructional designer clarifies the problems to be addressed uh, with an instructional intervention. And uh, this person also defines the training uh, or whatever training is needed and conducts an extensive audience analysis to determine the instructional environment or whatever is uh, the pre-existing knowledge of the learner. Also the skills and abilities and opportunities and the constraints of the system. In the design uh, step which comes after analyze, the instructional designer writes the learning objectives and determines the instructional strategies that will be utilized to achieve the objectives which were stipulated ahead of. And this, the, there are various decisions which are made about how the instructional material uh, will look like, how what will be the look and feel of the instructional material and how it will be uh, implemented and also uh, in, in the way in which it is going to be delivered to the learners. Also in case of uh, the uh, e-learning process, the storyboarding and the prototype development uh, is done in case the e-learning methodology is being adopted here in the design phase itself. Then comes the develop stage and here the content is uh, assembled and incorporated into the design to produce the instructional or performance support materials which are deliverable and um, uh, they, they have to be uh, delivered so the quality uh, is also uh, ensured and in case there is some sort of revision required then also we can think of that how these deliverables can be revised. The next phase is the implement phase and uh, here the finished course, the developed course or uh, if we are developing a skill or a tool is being developed, that particular uh, methodology of any of those courses, they are rolled out to the intended audience 
and its impact is monitored. Then the last phase is evaluate, but we have to make sure that the evaluate phase should go ahead um, whenever it is required. So in any of those earlier phases, the evaluation is possible whenever we find to, uh, to relook or to make a kind of uh, uh, checking of whatever is being done is correctly done or not, we can go for the evaluation. So in the evaluation, the instructional designer uses various methods to determine whether the course of performance or the supporting tools uh, which are being delivered are um, according to the expected results or not. So this was somehow a very simple and short um, way in which we can define the different uh, stages or the different uh, steps of the ADE model. But here we are going to see in this lecture, we are going to make an elaborate attempt to understand that what exactly is to be done and what are those questions which are to be asked or are answered while the implementation of these uh, steps of ADE model. So we will be discussing in detail and we will also see that what exactly is the importance of these steps to be followed in a hierarchical manner. Let us start with the first phase, which is the analysis phase. And we have seen that the analysis phase can be considered as the goal setting stage where we go for uh, checking and uh, stipulating all those objectives which we need to cover in the entire instructional design. So the focus of the designer in this phase is on the target audience. It is also uh, focused that the program matches the level of skill and intelligence that each the, of the participant is having or the participants are going to showcase. And this is to ensure that what they already know, the participants are already aware of, won't be duplicated. And that the focus will instead be on the topics and the lessons that students have yet to explore and learn. In this particular phase, the first phase, instructors distinguish between what the students already know and what they should know after completing the course. What would be the outcomes which we need to get once the course is completed? Several key components are to be utilized to make sure that the analysis is thorough. Then the, uh, the course text and the documents, the syllabus, the curriculum, and even the search engines, various uh, search engines, which, which are the part of the internet for making this analysis are employed. And with the help of online materials, such as the, uh, the websites and uh, various web material, which are available freely, a structure can be determined as the primary guide for the syllabus. And at the end of the program, the instructional analysis will be conducted to determine what subjects or topics are to be included. The analysis phase generally addresses the uh, issues which are uh, somehow the initial issues. Let us see that what exactly are those issues which this analysis phase addresses or what are those questions which are being answered here in this analysis phase. The analysis phase generally address various issues and questions and the questions which it tries to answer constitute like uh, what is the typical background of the participant or the student. And this student is the one who is going to participate in the program. It is also seen that what are the demographic variables like age, nationality, even the previous experiences and the interest level, all these things are determined. Then we also see that what is the target group? What are the educational goals? The past learning experiences, the past knowledge levels, and also the background, the cultural background, etc. in case of the learners. So all these are the part of the demographic variables then what do the students need to accomplish at the end of the program? What are the needs of the learner? What exactly the learner is willing to learn from this particular course? 
what will be required in terms of skills, intelligence, and also the perspectives which this student must be having. So all these things are checked beforehand. What are the desired learning outcomes in terms of knowledge, skills, attitudes, and behavior? Then determining the popular methods being used around the subject and taking uh, also a look towards what needs to be developed and improved. We can also go for a review of existing instructional strategies which are employed in uh, several other courses on the same area. So we can go for a, a status quo check and also go for seeing that what are those adequate areas and adequate uh, methodologies which are being adapted by people and is very useful so we can go for uh, adopting those. So what aspects need to be added, clarified and improved upon can be checked if we go for checking the contemporary courses. Then determining the target objectives of the project. What instructional goals does this particular project or the course is focusing on? Determining the various options available with respect to the learning environment. And what is the most conducive learning environment in case of completion of this course? A combination of live or online discussions. Is it possible or not? What are the various uh, advantages and the limitations between the online scenario and even in case of the classroom based study? So what can be the delivery options which can be chosen in terms of completing this, executing this course? What type of learning environment is preferred like uh, in case of the situations whether the student is willing to go for an online class or a face-to-face -face class or maybe a blended mode class where the combination of both is being provided. In case of offline, if it, the offline method is preferred, what will be the difference in learning outcomes between the classroom-based learning and the web-based learning? Whether we can find a kind of uh, substantial difference between the, uh, the learning outcomes once we are observing the classes in offline way or we are observing the classes in online way. So these type of researches can be seen, a kind of pilot can even be done. Determining the limiting factors to the overall goal of the project with respect to various available resources and here we can even consider for the technical resources, the, uh, the support of the human resources, the time which is available. And in case of uh, the, the teachers, the mentors, how many mentors are ready to contribute their services for uh, making this course very successful. We have to see all these things and how much training is required to, to be given to these mentors, the technical skills are appropriately there or not. And even in few of the cases when we develop the courses, we have to see that whether the financial factors, the, the supporting uh, material factors are conducive or not. So all these things are basically uh, seen or checked in the analysis stage. So these are the questions which, which we ask or which we try to get the answers in the analysis phase of any of the instructional designing process. The second stage, which is the design stage, determines all the goals, tools to be used to gauge the performance, various tests, the subject matter analysis, planning and resources. In the design phase, the focus is on the learning objectives, content, the subject matter analysis, even the creation of the exercises, lesson planning, and also choosing the assessment uh, ways. And also uh, we can go for using uh, the uh, checking that what uh, will be the media which is going to be used here in this particular course. The approach in this phase should be systematic with a logically orderly process of identification 
development and evaluation of planned strategies with the target uh, to attain the the goal of uh, the entire project which is being executed like the course is here the project so basically how we are going to plan the course how we are going to make this course it should follow a very specific set of rules and each element of the instructional design plan must be executed with a lot of attention and also uh, those minute details should be taken care of whenever we are trying to design a course a very systematic approach should be observed this systematic approach makes sure that everything falls within a rational and planned strategy whatever strategies are being set in the beginning then only we can go for uh, achieving the ultimate goal of reaching the targets of the course during the designing stage the instructional designers need to determine the approach in this phase basically uh, the, they they need to see that what would be the the approach which they are going to follow uh, in this in this particular uh, phase of designing how they are going to reach the targets of creating the course it should be very orderly they should identify that how they are going to go ahead with creation of the course what will be the development uh, ways the the ways in which they are going to develop the course and also the evaluation of planned strategies which target the attainment of the project goals it should follow a very specific set of rules and each element of the instructional design plan must be executed with attention to all the details so these are a few of those nitty gritties which we have to take care of when we are uh, doing the designing uh, stage of any of the instructional design now there are various things or uh, various attributes which we actually take care of in this designing stage what are these let us see during the designing stage the instructional designers need to determine the different types of media which are to be used like in case of uh, a simple course we have to see or we have to select that whether we are going to provide some audio material or a video material or maybe a graphic or some other example some interactive objects or anything else we are going to create our own uh, media like the resources are to be uh, created by the uh, course designer itself or the course designer is going to select the other resources which are available over the internet or created by somebody else and we also have to make sure that if we are using somebody else's material it should be open educational resource or it should be covering or provided under a license which is allowed allowing uh, the resource to be used by others without seeking permission and in case the attribution is to be given we should definitely give the attribution so all these uh, preparations or uh, in terms of the creation of the teaching learning material should be done here in this design phase various resources at hand required to complete the project should be selected and what are the available resources at our own disposal uh, for the creation of this course we have to just see that what exactly we have in terms of a text or any other type the level and the types of activities to be generated during the study should also be checked and kept very much in hand if we are going to create a team which is, which will be uh, running the course if this course is to be administered in a collaborative or, uh, way or in a collective manner then we should go for checking that who will be the participant in terms of mentoring the course then we also have to see that what exactly will be the style or approach of the individual teacher who is the part of this team because it should be in consonance with everybody it should not be like that one mentor is going in one way and the other is going in another way 
we have to see that what type of approach is being followed by the entire team whether the teachers are uh, following the constructivist approach or behaviorist approach or any other way of teaching so that is also something which we should take care of the time frame for each activity it should be stipulated otherwise it will get will go very much heavy so how much time is to be assigned to each task and how will the learning be implemented like in case of lesson planning we have to see that what will be the time in which this much topic or this much part of the lesson is to be uh, taught so everything is to be checked and measured a kind of measurement that this much topic is to be taught in 30 minutes or so is also to be done so uh, when we are designing we have to see that whether the topics are going in a kind of linear progression or not we have to see that the easy topics are taught first and then whatever is the prerequisite is taught first and then only we can go for the other topics so these type of easy to difficult way or like simple to complex should also be seen here the different mental processes needed by the participants in order to meet the targets of the project is to be taken care of and what are the prescribed cognitive skills for the students to achieve the projects or the courses learning goals these are also something which we need to determine knowledge and skill development after each task and we also have to see that the values which we need to develop in the students uh, once the course is over that are also coming up or not what are the methods which are adapted by the teachers in order to determine the acquisition of desired competencies by the students that we have to make sure there should be some timeline or the road map of how the study or the the course will appear on a paper or in black and white what will be the uh, the ways in which we are going to complete the course and what will be the time frame every single detail should be uh, very thoroughly seen will it be advantageous to the uh, instructional designer to create a map of the different activities to see if they are in line with the goal of the project or not that is also something which we need to take care of if the project is web based what kind of user interface we are going to employ what will be the platform on which we are going to launch the course this is something which we have to keep in mind whether we are launching this course on a government platform or mean any of the uh, the other uh, platforms which are freely available or we are going to buy some space and getting a platform a uh, paid platform for launching the course so all these things we need to see the feedback mechanism we are going to use to determine if the participants are able to digest the lessons and what is the mechanism designed by us to obtain the learners feedback or um, any type of queries on the material which is being learned so whether we are going for a live chat or maybe a um, chat box methodology and we have to periodically check what exactly is being asked by the students and we have to uh, to thoroughly give them the answers the wide variety of student preferences and learning styles are also to be taken care of what method you are going to implement to make sure that the program uh, basically is according to their needs how we are going to design the project activities so as to uh, so as to uh, get the the interest of the learners and we all know that there are diverse type of learners so maybe one method would not suit every student and in order to suit the needs and motivate every student to uh, to learn in a proper way we have to design various type of activities so these are all those things uh, which we need to take care of and the media selection is something which is very very important and 
also we always have to be very much focused in terms of that what exactly is the idea on which we have created this course and we are designing the course to fulfill that particular thought process on which we have designed the course the third stage is the development stage or the develop stage in the development stage starts the production and testing of the methodology being used in the course in this particular stage the instructional designers make use of the data collected from the two previous stages or whatever they have uh, got in the previous two stages all that information all this uh, information is being used to create a program that will rely what needs to be taught to the participants or the students if the two previous stages required planning and brainstorming the development stage is all about putting all these things which we have done earlier into action this phase includes basic three tasks and what are these these are the drafting production and evaluation so drafting production and evaluation are those three tasks which we accomplish in the develop stage development or the stage of uh, development involves creating and testing of learning outcomes this particular stage aims to address certain questions what are these questions let us see the first thing is that is the time frame being adhered to the Uh, to the stipulated objective in relation to what has been accomplished in terms of material are you creating the materials as per schedule means the text part the video part in case we are following the four quadrant approach for creation of a course and we have started the course alongside the development then we need to see that if the first week is gone and uh, we have to start the second week so at least the second week's material is complete before the second week starts so that type of uh, thorough development process should be going uh, on and on uh, with the uh, running of the course so the the material should be ready before the week in which the material is to be delivered is actually going to come so we see that how the team is working the entire group of people who are involved in the course the mentors the other uh, people who are responsible for creation of the uh, videos or uh, writing the text part how they are working whether they are working as a team or not are they effectively or and efficiently working for the successful uh, implementation of the course are the participants contributing as per their optimal capacity and are the material produced for uh, accomplishment of any of the task whether they are in a position to offer the same thing to the students or not for what purpose they were created for what purpose they were intended for whether they are in a position to accomplish that particular intention or not so all these things are uh, these type of questions are being asked should be asked by the instructional designer to himself or herself and the answers will give you a kind of uh, uh, light or a path that whether you are working in a proper way in terms of creating the course or not then comes the fourth stage which is the stage of implementation or the implement stage the implementation stage reflects the continuous modification of the program to make sure the maximum efficiency and positive result uh, are obtained or not whether we are getting the right results or not this is the stage where the instructional designers strive to redesign update and edit the course in order to ensure that it can be delivered effectively effectively 
So if there is something which, which is seen that is not going on properly, then we can make changes. So the procedure is basically the keyword, how we are going to implement, how we are going to, uh, to deliver this course to the audiences. Much of the real work is done here in this stage. Because the instructional designers and the students work hand in hand to train on new tools so that the design can be continuously evaluated for the further improvement. And we all know that nothing can run in isolation. And in the absence of proper evaluation from the instructional designers, it is not possible for us to deliver the course, course in a proper way. Since this stage gains much feedback from the instructional designers and the participants, much can be learned and addressed. Design evaluation is done in the implementation phase. Designers play a very important role in this particular stage, which is crucial for the success of the project. Developers should consistently analyze, redesign, and enhance the product to ensure the effective product delivery. Meticulous monitoring is also a must in the implementation stage. Proper evaluation of the product, course, or program with necessary and timely revision is done here in this implementation phase. And when the instructors and the learners actively contribute during the implementation process, instantaneous modifications can be made to the, uh, the entire course. And in this way, we can make the course or the program more effective and successful. There are a few of the examples of uh, what exactly is to be done here in this course. The implementation stage actually is uh, following few of those things which are to be uh, completed in this particular stage only. What are these? Let us see. We can advise on the preferred method of uh, record keeping. We basically uh, go for making a, a check that how we are going to keep the record. And we also can go for actual data collection, which we, uh, we have uh, uh, seen to be found by the experiences of the students uh, which, who are the part of this particular course. What is the emotional feedback which is given to, uh, to the teachers and the students during their internal uh, or initial kind of demonstration of the project? Like when you are piloting the project, what kind of emotional feedback is uh, received from the teachers or the mentors and also from the students? Are they genuinely interested or eager or they are, they are showing some sort of resistance or they are a little bit, bit uh, critical in terms of the course. All these things are to be seen. As the project proceeds, we see that how the instructional designers are able to grasp the topic immediately or do they need help? We have to explain how we are going to deal with any possible errors during the testing of the course and what will be the response of the course developer if we find any sort of error in terms of uh, the student uh, like the way in which the students are accepting the course or the material is being delivered so whatever was the planning whether it is very much executed in the same way or not, that is to be tested every now and then. And that testing should be followed by making the changes and improvement. Whether we have prepared a backup plan or something which is going to be uh, on the place of if some error arises, if there is a failure found in, in the course content or maybe uh, suppose a video is uh, given and the video doesn't start or there is an error which is found in the video then what will be the backup which we are going to provide to the students uh, instead of uh, this like in on the place of this particular video 
so that backup plan should also be ready when technical and other problems arise what kind of strategy you are going to follow as a course developer that is something which you have to plan very much in the beginning itself what will be the implementation uh, way whether you are going to implement it on a large scale or on a small scale what will be the platform whether you are going to become the part of a bigger uh, institution and you are going to launch that as the segment of that particular institutional uh, program or you are going to uh, offer it in the course as an independent uh, individual so all these things are to be very much thought of and to be rectified modified whenever the modifications are required even in the implementation stage the next is and the last step is the evaluate stage this last stage of ed method basically is very important and we can say that it is not uh, the last stage but it can be seen as a uh, step which should be uh, the part of the the every stage starting from the beginning this is a stage in which the project is being subjected to meticulous final testing regarding to what how when how and why basically this course is being developed or the purpose every single how what and why is basically checked for the entire course this phase can be broken into two parts basic two parts the first can be the formative and the second can be the summative part the initial evaluation actually happens during the development stage the formative phase happens while the students and the instructional designers are conducting the study while the summative portion occurs at the end of the program the main goal of the evaluation stage is to determine if the goal has been met and to establish that what will be required in terms of moving forward in order to to take it further the efficiency and the success rate of the project every stage of the ed process involves formative evaluation and this can be seen as a multi dimensional and essential component of the ed process and that is why you can uh, see that the initial diagram which shows all the stages evaluation is kept in between and there are bidirectional arrows which say that and the the arrows are basically in dotted lines which informs us that it is not compulsory for us to go for uh, uh, any type of modification it is possible to go for an evaluate evaluation and if we don't want to we can even go ahead with another phase so evaluation is done uh, throughout the implementation phase with the aid of the instructor and also the students after implementation of a course or program basically once this uh, program or the course is over a summative evaluation is done for the instructional improvement or even for providing grades and marks and all throughout the evaluation phase the designer should ascertain that whether the problems relevant to the training program or the course are solved and whether the desired objectives are met so these are the things which we uh, as a course developer should always be aware of in this evaluation stage which is considered to be the essential step of the entire ed method there are various questions which are answered or you can say that this stage of uh, offers various answers for the questions which are uh, asked by the instructional designers to himself or herself or even by the students to the course developer what can be these the first can be to determine the categories that will be established to evaluate the effectiveness of the project or the course what will be the improved learning or increased motivation level on what the what of the factors or the criteria will the effectiveness of the project 
is going to be determined. To determine the way we are going to implement the data collection as well as the timing at which it will be effectively made. When will the data related to the uh, course and, and the overall effectiveness of the course is going to be collected and how it is going to be collected. Determining the system for analyzing the participant feedback. To determine the method to be used if some parts of the project they need to be changed which, uh, which actually happens prior to the full release of the course. On what basis we are going to arrive at a decision to revise certain aspects of the project before its full implementation. To determine the method by which reliability and con the, the validity and here in this case content validity of uh, the course can be observed. To determine the method by which we are going to know if the instructions are clear enough for the reader or for the student or not. How is the clarity of instructions assessed? To determine the method by which we are going to analyze and grade the responses of the participants who are the part of this course. To de determine that who gets to receive our final output regarding the project. Who will prepare the report on the result of the evaluation? So basically, who is who? Who is responsible for doing what? The roles, responsibilities, everything is to be checked. Everything is working properly or not. All the things are working in order to meet the objectives. So these are the things which we need to address or this stage of evaluation addresses in the ED model. Let us now try to summarize what we have studied. We have studied uh, a little bit about the instructional designing. We have seen that instructional designing is the process by which the instruction is improved through the analysis of learning needs and systematic development of learning experiences. Instructional designers often use technology and multimedia as tools to enhance instruction. Then we saw the very popular methodology uh, popularly called as the EDI instructional design model. And this process of uh, planning the training and developmental activities basically constitutes various stages. EDI is an acronym which stands for Analyze, Design, Develop, Implement and Evaluate, which eventually are the various stages of the EDI model. Then we have also seen that what are those very peculiar questions which are being answered at, at every particular stage of a D model. How it works in terms of creation of a course, implementation of a course, and proper execution of a course, and getting the results which were thought of while the development of the course was uh, incepted. So all these things constitute this particular method which is popular uh, in the world of instructional designing a lot and it is considered to be good when we, uh, we talk in terms of creation of a course. These are a few of those references and the suggested links which were used by the development of this uh, particular lecture. You can also go ahead and study more related to the instructional designing and other methods or even the EDI model. And you can also see that how these models are changing the world of instructional design in your own way. So this was all for today. Let us meet with each other in another session another time. Thank you so much. See you all again. Dear learners, you are watching a video related to emerging technologies and issues in educational technology. And in this lecture, we discussed the models of instructional designing. And the topic of discussion for today was EDI model. This video lecture 
was recorded by faculty at home during the homebound situation of COVID-19 pandemic using minimal technical resources. Technical errors, if any, are unintentional and may please be ignored. For any queries with regard to this lecture or broadcast, kindly send your email to techsupport at dth.ac.in. Thank you so much.